Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today, we're reviewing the new NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070 Super and RTX 2060 Super graphics cards. And yep, they really went with Super. Whatever, I guess it's just a name after all, so doesn't matter too much, and at least it is a clear identifier that these GPUs are indeed new and different from existing 2060 and 2070 products. Without wasting any time, let's jump straight in the specs and we'll also discuss the pricing. The RTX 2060 Super is coming in at $400 US, so a small price premium over the existing non-Super models. For that 14% bump in price, you do get quite a significant upgrade, at least in terms of specs, though at first glance it doesn't appear to be the case as we are only getting 13% more CUDA cores. However, we do see a massive 33% increase in ROPS, and this extends the 192-bit wide memory bus of the original RTX 2060 to 256-bit wide for the Super version. Because the same 14 gigabits per second GDDR6 memory is used, the bandwidth has also increased by 33% to 448 gigabytes per second. So then the RTX 2060 Super has the same memory subsystem as the RTX 2070 and 2070 Super, and this means it gets eight gigabytes of VRAM. Essentially then, it's a slightly cut down version of the 2070. Both use TU-106 silicon. The 2070 Super, on the other hand, comes in at the same $500 price point as the 2070. So it's effectively replacing this part and you can expect vanilla 2070s to be phased out shortly. For the same money, you're getting an 11% upgrade in CUDA cores, 28% more texture units, while the ROP count remains the same. We also see a reasonable 9% increase in boost clocks for the core, but given most cards are factor overclocked, this will have little impact on performance. Finally, the memory configuration remains the same. 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory with a data rate of 14 gigabits per second for a memory bandwidth of 448 gigabytes per second. Unlike the standard 2070, which uses TU-106 silicon, the Super version has been upgraded to TU-104, the same silicon used by the RTX 2080. So the RTX 2060 Super looks to be a rather substantial upgrade over the base model, but you're paying a bit more, while the 2070 Super looks to be a similar upgrade over the 2070, but in that case you're getting the extra performance at no added cost. I guess it's the extra memory that NVIDIA is stinging gamers for with the 2060 Super. Finally, I should just note there will also be a 2080 Super, and that model is going to slot in at the $700 US price point. But right now, other than its existence and the suggested price, we don't know too much more as the specs and release date are yet to be announced. That said, NVIDIA did claim some info, claiming it will have 15.5 gigabits per second GDDR6 memory, and it will be faster than the Titan XP. For testing, I've used an Intel Core i9 9900K processor clocked at 5GHz with 32GB of DDR4-3400 memory. The latest drivers available at the time of testing have been used, and all this data is fresh. Brand new for this video, and collected in the past week and a half. We have a dozen games to look at, and then we'll do the usual performance breakdowns and look at the cost per frame data. I will be focusing on the 1440p performance, but for all the 1080p and 4K results, please get them for free over on our Patreon page. The link will be in the video description. Okay, let's get into the results. First up, we have Battlefield 5, and here we see the 2070 Super bridging the gap between the 2070 and 2080. Not a massive performance boost, but not bad either. The Radeon 7 is still 18% faster in this title, but it does cost at least 36% more. So I suspect the 2070 Super is going to cause more pain for AMD's current flagship GPU. Meanwhile, the RTX 2060 Super looks adequate, I guess. It was just 9% faster than the RTX 2060 in this title, and while that had it nipping at the 2070's heels and ahead of Vega 56, that's not exactly an exciting result given that it costs 14% more, but I guess there is some utility in having that extra VRAM. This time, when testing with Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege, the 2070 Super is closer to the 2080 than it is to the 2070, and it also comfortably beat the older GTX 1080 Ti, so a very solid result here. I should also note that it comfortably beat AMD's Radeon 7 as well. The 2060 Super was 16% slower than the 2070 Super, with an average of 111 FPS, and this placed it a little behind the standard 2070, basically between it and the standard 2060. So again, not a particularly impressive result given the increase in price. 
Moving on, we have Metro Exodus. Here, the 2070 Super was nipping at the heels of the Radeon 7, falling short by just a few frames per second. This also meant it was much closer to the RTX 2080 than it was the 2070. Then we see the 2060 Super outpacing the standard 2060 by a 10% margin to deliver 2070-like performance. This time we're testing with Resident Evil 2, the 2070 Super is again right on the Radeon 7's tail, though this time it does sit right between the 2070 and 2080. The 2060 Super is again a smidgen slower than the 2070, but faster than Vega 64, so another 10% performance boost over the standard 2060. The 2060 Super is a little more impressive in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, beating the 2060 by a 13% margin, and this made it quite a bit faster than Vega 64. Meanwhile, the 2070 Super matched the GTX 1080 Ti and was just a few frames slower than the RTX 2080, so a pretty solid result here. Fortnite's not a great title for AMD, and we see this here as the 2060 Super is just 5 FPS down on the much more expensive Radeon 7. And we see that although the 2070 Super was quite a bit slow than the RTX 2080, it had no trouble brushing aside the Radeon 7, beating it by an 11% margin. The Division 2 results look pretty typical given what we've seen so far. The 2060 Super is 10% faster than the standard model, while the 2070 Super is 14% faster than its standard model. This all meant that the 2060 Super was faster than Vega 64, while the 2070 Super was faster than the Radeon 7. The Radeon GPUs do fare much better in Dirt Rally 2, and here the 2060 Super is only able to match Vega 64 and was just 5% faster than Vega 56, which is now selling for down around $300 US. Then we see that the 2070 Super was just 7% slower than the Radeon 7, so it fares better in this comparison. Here we have another racing simulator in Forza Horizon 4, and coincidentally, this is another great title for AMD. Here we see the Radeon 7 streaking ahead of the 2070 Super, making Nvidia's new $500 offering 17% slower. Then we see the 2060 Super is also done in by Vega 56, losing by a 10% margin. Moving on to some Far Cry New Dawn testing, and here we see the 2060 Super right behind the 2070, while the 2070 Super is right behind the 2080. This means the 2060 Super was able to match Vega 64, and the 2070 Super was 8% slower than the Radeon 7. And yes, I am aware that I've said super way too many times in this video, but what's the alternative? <laughs> the second last game tested is World War Z, and here the Radeon GPUs performed very well. The 2060 Super couldn't keep pace with Vega 56, while the Radeon 7 was significantly faster than the 2070 Super. Still, relative to Nvidia's own product stack, these new Super versions did perform quite well. Finally, we have the last game tested, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and here the 2060 Super was 11% faster than the standard 2060, which is pretty typical based on what we've seen so far. Meanwhile, the 2070 Super was 10% faster than the standard 2070, and this put it right on the tail of the 2080 and 1080 Ti. So that's gonna do it for the gaming benchmarks. Let's move on to check out power consumption. Looking purely at the GPU power consumption, we see that the 2060 Super is very efficient, consuming just 5% more power than the standard 2060, and just 2% or 4 watts more than the RX 590. Then we see the 2070 Super jumped up to 198 watts, and that made it 11% more power hungry than the 2060 Super, but still it was considerably more efficient than the Radeon Competition, consuming 20% less power than the Radeon 7. However, once we factor in the entire system draw, those margins are reduced quite substantially. Now the 2070 Super consumes just 10% less power than the Radeon 7, and there are some interesting changes here when measuring power draw from the wall. Vega 64 jumps well ahead of the RTX 2080 Ti, for example, and in the GPU test, it did consume less power. The reason for this change is down to the fact that we're now including the power draw for the entire graphics card, as well as other components in the system, such as the CPU, which has to work harder when paired with certain GPUs, typically the more powerful models. Anyway, the super variants slot in exactly where you'd expect them to in terms of power usage. Now, moving on into operating frequencies, temperatures, fan speeds, and a little overclocking. Out of the box, the 2060 Super Fan Edition ran at 70 degrees with a fan speed of 1650 RPM, so it was virtually silent. 
The GPU maintained an average operating frequency of 1815 MHz after an hour-long loop of the F1 2018 benchmark. Overclocked, our sample was able to sustain 2010 MHz after the hour-long test, and this saw the operating temperature increase to 75 degrees with a fan speed of 1900 RPM. So a pretty typical 11% overclock for this Turing-based GPU. Moving on to the 2070 Super, and we see that out of the box, the Founders Edition model peaked at just 68 degrees with a fan speed of 1600 RPM, and this allowed it to maintain an operating frequency of 1890 megahertz. Overclocked R sample maintained an operating frequency of 1980 megahertz, but please note, for the first few minutes of this test, it was running at over two gigahertz, but after about five minutes, it did begin to throttle down, and by the end of the hour-long test, it only sustained 1980 megahertz, which is a mere 5% overclock. The card was only running at 71 degrees, with a fan speed of just 1700 RPM, so it was still incredibly quiet. Okay, so there's all the performance information. Now it's time to make sense of it. And for that, we have a few performance breakdown charts, and then of course, we'll look at the cost per frame data. So let's go do that. As you'd probably expect, based on the benchmarks just seen, the RTX 2060 Super is indeed only slightly slower than the GeForce RTX 2070. So for the most part, around 4% slower. The only game where the performance was equalized was Assassin's Creed Odyssey, while the only game where the margin was extended beyond 4% was Fortnite. When compared to the standard 2060, the new Super Duper version was 9% faster on average, though we are comparing it to MSI's Gaming Z version. Nvidia suggests the Super model is 15% faster on average, but either way, not an overly impressive result given you're paying 14% more. So it's basically just another Turing-based GPU that fits in on the pricing structure that was set a year ago. Worse still for the 2060 Super is the fact that it's just 11% faster than AMD's Radeon RX Vega 56, which can be had for less than $300 now. Sure, it is on the way out, but at least in the short term, that's not great news for the much newer NVIDIA GPU. Moving on to the 2070 Super, and here we see on average it was 7% slower than the RTX 2080, and this effectively eliminates that part as the 2070 Super is almost 30% cheaper. But of course, before too long, we should have an RTX 2080 Super part as well. But the point is, at least relative to existing RTX parts, the 2070 Super does look like a pretty good deal. Still, it's not an amazing deal. Basically, you're getting 12% more performance on average for the same price. Not nothing, but not amazing either. That said, we've come to expect these 12-month refreshes by this point, so who's surprised that we're not getting a 30% performance boost anyway? That is the reality we're faced with these days. But anyway, let's move on to see how it fares against AMD's Radeon 7. Well, there you have it, just 4% slower on average, and given it costs at least 26% less, the 2070 Super effectively kills the Radeon 7 as it was never more than 17% slower. Fair to say, without a price cut, the Radeon 7 really is dead at this point. Now, time for the cost per frame analysis, but before we look at the current asking price, let's just do an MSRP comparison, but don't focus on this data too much as it can be a little bit misleading. I just wanted to compare the MSRPs first as it shows how much progress we've made from the Pascal generation. Here we see that the 2060 Super costs $4.59 per frame, and that makes the GTX 1070 24% more costly per frame. And that sounds pretty good for Turing, but remember the GTX 1070 is now a three-year-old product. So while that certainly is progress, it's not really a lot of progress given the time period. I should note that the 2060 Super is 30% faster than the GTX 1070, but it also costs 5% more. Now for the 2070 Super, here we see that the GTX 1080 Ti costs 33% more per frame. So not a bad result for the 2070 Super, but again, not exactly a super result given we're comparing it to a now two-year-old product. Okay, so let's compare the MSRP of the 2060 Super and 2070 Super to the current market prices of competing products. And for this, I've removed the end of production Pascal parts as new models are overpriced. Here we see that the 2060 Super is still worse value than the original 2060. In fact, even more so here, given that you can now get 2060 models for a slight discount at $330 US. Worse still, you can get Vega 56 for just $270 in the US right now, and that makes the 2060 Super 35% more costly per frame. Having said that, keep in mind those Vega 56 deals aren't available in all regions. 
But even so, the fact that the 2060 Super isn't particularly great value sitting next to even the $400 Vega 64, that isn't good news for gamers. Thankfully, the 2070 Super is better value than the 2070, but at an 8% discount per frame, it's not exactly cause for celebration. Still, it does one punch knock out the Radeon 7 and RX 2080 graphics cards, so there is that. And that does indeed bring us to the end of this video. Nvidia's attempt to steal AMD's Thunder next week seems a bit weak to me. Uh, they really could have given us a lot more, but perhaps they don't need to. And I guess that is the real issue here. Ignoring AMD's Navi, and I guess we, we sort of have to given that we're under NDA and we have cards sitting on the test bench right now, but ignoring Navi, it's fair to say this roughly 12 month later refresh from Nvidia it's pretty underwhelming and it really wasn't worth getting out of bed for and I need as much sleep as I can get right now. The RTX 2070 Super is decent. It certainly kills off the Radeon 7 at its current asking price and basically does the same to the RTX 2080. So you're almost getting $700 performance for $500. Almost, not quite, and I suppose that is a bit disappointing roughly a year later. But there's also no better deal at this price point, and that's exactly why we're desperately in need of AMD to step it up a notch. Or two, maybe three. However, compared to the RTX 2060 Super, the 2070 Super is a much more exciting product. And well, I guess that's also very disappointing. Price to performance, the 2060 Super is technically better value, but you expect that with lower round parts. And while it's worse value than the standard 2060 in terms of performance, you do get that extra two gigabytes of VRAM. The Founders Edition cards did run quite cool and they were very quiet. I also think they look quite nice and the build quality is excellent. The good news being this time around, you don't have to pay a premium for the FE models. You can get them at the base MSRP. So that is some good news there. Overall, not much more to say on this one. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and if you appreciate the work we do at Hiram Box, then consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.